our world is about exploring multi-dimensions that aren't constrained to the physical world which we choose to measure in three dimensions. Our world began as a very simple project. It was a, a, a question of how can you get several designers to program in one, on one object, one subject, one context. This is a very complicated uh, procedure. All sorts of surprising things came out of it. One of them is that in the world of programming, you're not stuck to just three dimensions. You can actually go way beyond that. You might say, well, what do you mean by that? Because surely there is only three dimensions of space. And I'd refer you to Flann O'Brien's book, The Third Policeman. And what happens in the book is as you go through it, you realize at the end that you're just at the beginning of the book again. And also that you've been traveling through a world that's just full of many dimensions beyond just those three X, Y, and Z. With the project with the students trying to do this morphing together of one object to another, so in this case like a sphere into a cube done together, we then morphed into another dimension which is a sphere cube into a pyramid for instance, that's two dimensions, and then we had another dimension which is a cylinder. So we're producing these objects as a uh, collection for a curator. We, we had this context that there was a curator who wanted a, com uh, a collection of unique objects and these objects would be stored on shelves in the museum. But because we were working multi-dimensionally, in other words, we went from three dimensions to four to five to six, we ended up creating very unusual objects, objects that existed because there they were made through the 3D printing, through computation, but they couldn't be stored on shelves because we'd gone beyond the three-dimensional capability of a shelf stack in a museum. In the end, we found that we'd produced so many objects that with just a simple uh, array of 21, that's 21 objects going from a sphere to a cube, for instance, multiplied by 21 uh, in, the, in the other direction, so you've got a 21 by 21, multiply that by 21, you've got a cube of 21 times 21 times 21 objects. That's in three dimensions. As soon as you get to nine dimensions, we had actually made an object, not only for everybody in the world today to have their own unique object, unique color, but actually for anybody who had ever lived up until this point. If I said to you, look, can you describe to me what would happen if you morphed a cube into a sphere? What do you get, say, halfway through the process? So it's halfway from being a sphere, halfway towards being a cube. But you can draw that, probably. If I said to you, can you sketch that for me? You would sketch that. Go to a fifth dimension, which you say you take that four-dimensional morph, and we're now going to go towards a wedge. Impossible. I haven't met anybody to, who can actually describe that. So the importance of this is that using this machinery, which is the computer to do the computation and then the, and the printer to print it, we can produce something which is definitely of the mind. We definitely know what we've produced, we know how we've produced it, but visually we can't describe it without the help of this machinery to produce it. Naturally, I'd, I'd, I'd want to relate this project to the work I've been doing in the Sagrada Familia. Uh, if you look at the, one of the simplest details that Gaudi uh, effected, which is decoration around a window, he actually morphs between two objects. They're decorative objects. They look like shields. And one goes to another, which goes back to itself, back to itself again. Now, Gaudi obviously could do this in his mind, conceptually, just as Flann O'Brien and the third policeman could describe a world of multi-dimensions for us. But us in the middle, we do need the computer actually to bring this to, to life.